The kit does include this back panel, which for some reason has a hole in the middle of it, but I'm not going to use that. Instead, I have fabricated this box, and that fits over here, and it's going to provide some shielding. There is only a hole for the power connector. The front of the function generator has been assembled. What is now missing is the power supply, and for that I have now started working on the back of the unit. The transformer and the primary side of the power supply are done. I really hate these screws. You think you're tightening them down, but well, the next thing that happens is you slip out of them with a screwdriver. Look at those scratches. That's really annoying. Here are the electronics. Nothing fancy. Just a little linear regulator, filter capacitors and rectifier bridge. Simple layout. Not the prettiest. However, there is a reason why I did the layout this way. Right here is the input filter capacitor. There is the output filter capacitor. Now the filter capacitors are going to work best if you have the voltage that they are supposed to filter connected straight across them. Literally straight across them. So we have the positive rail and it comes down to the filter capacitor and then it goes up to the voltage regulator. That's the input. Now, I did the same thing for the ground right here, but that was primarily out of laziness. I could have done a T-shaped setup for this. However, the same T-shaped setup right here, of course, would have meant that uh, there would have been an additional length of wire between here and here. Of course, this wire has a certain resistance, which is going to be in series with the filter capacitor. So basically, you're raising the ESR of the filter capacitor, which of course you don't want. The filter capacitor is going to be less effective with this additional resistance. So there is method to this madness. Now there has been a fair bit of confusion, which I will try to explain so that you can avoid this mistake. Now, this being a 15 volt regulator, you have to have 18 volts at least, 18 volts going in to the regulator. Uh, this does need a 3 volt drop across it to work properly. So, 18 volts, you can do the maths and you'll find out that you'll need at least 12.67 volts AC going into the circuit. Now, of course, a little higher is better. So I found this transformer here. It said 18 volts on it, but as I tested it, it turns out really it's a 20 volt transformer, which is a little too much. So I found this transformer, and you might be able to see it says 12 volts on there. Well, as I tested this thing, it turned out to be more of a 13 and a half volt transformer, which, looking at that, is perfectly fine. Well, it turns out, as I had everything wired up and ready to go, this magically turned back into a 12 volt transformer and as a result I did not have the necessary 3 volts for this regulator that it could work with. In fact there was like 1 volt across this regulator which was not enough at all. In fact uh, it almost seems like the output of the regulator was less stable than the input. So that was a fail. Now, I don't really have a lot of these small transformers, so eventually I had to go with this 20-volt transformer, so 
There's going to be a huge voltage drop across this regulator, which is not ideal, but it ought to work. And here we have the completed back panel with 15 volt linear power supply. That's how it's going to look from the outside, complete with annoying scratches. And here we have the assembled unit. So we have the function generator module in the front, which has its tin can for shielding. Power supply is in the back, obviously. Connecting the two together, we have the power leads and the safety ground. Doing some more experiments with this thing, I guess I found the first major weakness of this function generator. The output amplifier really isn't very load stable at all. You can see we're generating a 1 Hz sine wave with a 5 volt amplitude. Now that goes straight up to the scope, except I have this uh, 50 ohm terminator right here. So basically I have a 50 ohm resistor hooked up in parallel with the generator output and the scope. So the function generator is now driving a 50 ohm load, which it should be able to do without any problems. But as we look at the screen, as we look at the readouts, so you can see we are getting the desired 1 hertz frequency. However, our peak-to-peak -peak voltage is down at about 2.4 volts, so that is less than half of what it should be. If I now remove this little terminator plug, aha, look at that. We are almost back at the full 5 volts, 4.6 volts. So, eh, that's, uh, that's not perfect. The final assembly has been done, and that's it for right now. That's the FG085 Mini DDS Arbitrary Function Generator by JYE Tech. I'll now start using this in my laboratory. So, until then, thank you for watching.